Hey everybody, we're back with another restaurant review at a favorite restaurant at Disney Springs. A lot of people consider this one to be a perfect spot, but is it really? Let's find out. Tonight we are dining at Wine Bar George in Disney Springs, brought to you by Master Somali George Militotis. Um, he actually did the wine list over at California Grill, and now he's opened his own restaurant that's known for different small plates. Um, they've got charcuterie boards, they've got a brunch on the weekend, and they do have some bigger uh, entrees at lunch and dinner. But of course, this is a wine bar, so they have over 135 wines on um, hand. You can get them by the glass, the bottle, the ounce. They've got other great cocktails. And uh, like I said, this one is considered pretty much perfect by anyone who's ever eaten here. It's a great date night spot, a great girls' night out spot, um, but is it as good as everybody says? Let's find out. First things first, I love the vibes of this restaurant. So there's a downstairs, an upstairs, and an upstairs patio. Um, and it's got this like industrial chic vibe going on. Like there's brick and there's metal. Um, and upstairs there's like leather couches and chairs you can sit in. Um, and the balcony's great as well. It's just a little chilly tonight. So I absolutely love the vibe in here. It very much gives off like date night vibe. Now let's talk about the food. They've got a QR code menu. So if you take a look at the menu here for dinner, um, the cast member just told me if you click on anything you can actually see what it looks like so i clicked on the mac and cheese bites and boom there's a picture of them which i think is really fun it's a nice little touch uh, and you've got your full menu here for dinner like i said they do a variety of small plates that are really great so you can get a couple of those um, to share amongst the table or a couple of those for your dinner they are known for their boards as well they do artisanal cheese charcuterie or a big board that's got both they do have a couple entrees as well the short ribs chicken and then they have a couple family style platters and this menu does vary a little bit at lunch they do a little bit of lighter things uh, of course they are known for their wine um, and i've got a full paper wine list here for you to look at um, but they also have some great cocktails as well. The Hoot is one that uh, George actually told me. I drank this in the brunch throwdown, which we can link for you. Um, and George himself told us this is what he makes at home when he's making cocktails. Um, old fashions, uh, coffee martinis, all kinds of great things. They have some beers here as well. But of course they're known for wine. But one thing that's great about this restaurant that I've noticed every time I've come here is the service is incredible and they will find you the perfect drink to accompany your meal. Was not kidding about the depth of the wine list. They've got a ton of different wines all broken up by um, red white sparkling you can do lots of them by the glass you can do lots of them by the bottle some of them you can do by the ounce some of their they call them outstanding um, so they're gonna be some of the finest wines you can get and you can get them by the ounce you can make your own flight with that um, but what I again love about this place is the cast members will find you the perfect glass of wine and it doesn't always have to be you think maybe they're gonna recommend something super expensive they're not um, every time I've been here I've told them what we're ordering what I normally drink and they find the perfect glass or bottle for the table course one has arrived it's some of my favorite things you've got their signature mac and cheese bites it comes with four of them a little of the tomato sauce there's mac and cheese in there can't wait to cut one of those open also got their signature meatballs which comes with a cheesy polenta those are fabulous and then I talked to my server I asked him what kind of wine I should drink I told him what I normally drink which is like Pinot Noirs um, he recommended this Chianti it's an Italian red wine um, and I'm excited to try that I had a little sip when he poured it and it was fabulous and he said it would go with everything I plan to order tonight all the way from the appetizers up to the spoiler alert beef first things first look in here look at that yummy cheesy macaroni and cheese in there yum let's eat one mm. they are so so good and I know mac and cheese bites don't seem like an elevated thing to eat, but they have done it. It is, the, the fry is light and crispy. Um, and then there is clearly some high quality cheese in there. Four different cheeses, I believe. A little bit of heat in the blend on the fry. These are absolutely perfect. I could eat a hundred of them, probably. Getting a bite of the meatball next. So these are pork. So if you are not a pork eater, um, these are going to be a no-go. Their meatballs are so good every time. They're always nice and moist, tons of flavor. Got that rich fattiness from the pork. And then the creamy, cheesy polenta. It's A+. plus. Honestly, I could eat these two dishes in their entirety, and that could be my dinner, and I'd be the happiest person ever. But of course, we're at Wine Bar George. We're going to wash it down with a little glass of wine. That is a great red he chose. Not something I would have picked, but again, that's why they're the experts. I would have just picked a Pinot Noir, but 
It's light. Um, it's got a little bit more of the acidity. It's got a nice earthiness. So trust your server here, and I promise if they pour it and you don't like it, let them know. They'll get you something else. But they are the experts. The next tasty and most delicious item has arrived. This is the artisanal cheese board, um, and it comes with a variety of hand-selected cheeses. You have got a California blue, a Seattle cheddar, a Spanish manchego, um, and a Tom's milk unpasteurized uh, milk, uh, cow's milk cheese. That one's out of Georgia. And then the accompaniments, you get our little fig spread, a little honey, and some olives. And then it comes with a uh, nice stack of crostinis and crackers. So they do also have a charcuterie board here, um, and then they also have a big board that's got boats. So depending on how many people you have, what you're looking for, um, they're definitely on the pricier side, but there's actually like a good amount of stuff that you get with it for the price. So I think it's a it's an okay deal. Snow Baseline Tap House, y'all know that's my favorite of the cheese boards, um, but you do get more cheese on this one than other ones of comparable prices at other locations. All right, so if you know me, you know I consider a cheese board to be a choose your own adventure tale. So I've got a couple crostinis. I'm just gonna start putting different cheeses on there because it's like, why not just go on this adventure together? So we're gonna do a little of the manchego. We're gonna do a little of that cow's milk cheese. We're just doing them all. We're just gonna do it all. I love cheese. So that's probably one of the reasons I love this restaurant is a lot of their dishes are very cheese heavy. All the cheese is fantastic. You can tell it's like, you know, it's, it's not crap English, you know, it's nice cheese, and you can tell that. You eat enough cheese, which I consider myself a professional cheese eater. I've been training for this my whole life. I was a very picky eater growing up, and the one thing I would eat is cheese. Like, my whole family makes one before. But I love the sweetness from the honey. This one's got a little of the fig and the blue on there. That fig is so good, and that blue is fantastic. Oh my gosh. A great cheese board. Probably my second favorite cheese board on property outside of that one at Baseline, just because you can't beat the price on that one. But a great board. And especially if you're just coming in for like a nosh for a glass of wine and a board. Again, it is a little pricier, but you get a lot, and it's definitely easily shared. Four, no shame, I've made this my dinner before. Ah! Next up on this cheesy deliciousness adventure we're on tonight, um, we have Saganaki on fire. So this is another cheese dish that comes in this little skillet and it makes quite an entrance. Ah! Basically this is, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this, La Portieri cheese, which is a um, Greek sheep's milk cheese. They pour some uh, metaxa on it, which is a Greek spirit, and then they light it on fire and they finish it with a little squeeze of a lemon wedge for flavor and it comes with some crostinis and it is so delicious and it is an eye catcher. Literally, he lit it on fire and everyone around the room started staring at our table because it is like a production. Got some of my fire cheese on there. It's so good. You know when you're making nachos or anything, on a skillet or in a, on a sheet pan and some of the cheese falls off and like burns a little bit and it's so good. That's what this tastes like but a thousand times better. It's got a little bit of crispiness from the fire and then you can taste the acidity from the lemon. A little bit of saltiness from the cheese. It's great. Of everything we've had so far, that's probably the most unique, so definitely the thing I recommend getting here. I also love those meatballs, and I mean, all of it's great, but the, the cheese on fire is definitely something unique and signature. They also do a great hummus here, um, if you don't want as much dairy, and they used to do these great shishito peppers, which are out of season right now. This is another great thing about this restaurant. They rotate a lot of their menu items based on what's available and what's in season. And here we have the piece de resistance. These are the Santa Carada short ribs, uh, and they come with a red potato mash, some roasted Brussels sprouts. Look at this, look at this. I mean, this is like falling apart delicious short rib. It is so moist and tender, and I'm not really a short rib person. Like, I enjoy short ribs, but I normally lean towards like an actual steak, but they are fall apart in your mouth. So delicious. And the secret behind these short ribs is that they're from a farm called Santa Carota, and Carota is carrot because these are cattle that are uh, grass fed and carrot fed and the carrots are the secret to why it's so delicious. Then let's try a little bit of this Brussels sprout. I love Brussels sprouts are one of my favorite vegetables. There's a nice caramelization on them. A little bit of crispiness in the potato. It's a superb dish. And what I love about this restaurant is you can do a full, you know, steak dish essentially, 
or you can do tapas or any mixture in between and you're going to be happy either way. They have a great range depending on what your needs are. For me personally, when I usually come, this is a place I come a lot, not for work. I come with my husband. I come when I had my girlfriends, my sorority sisters from college visit. This is where I took them and we just did a bunch of the tapas and you get really get the whole range and you can't go wrong. And finishing off our meal with the olive oil cake. Yes, olive oil. Um, it comes with a mascarpone cheese on top with a little lemon zest as well as some candied olives. And uh, in the past, I've loved this, but it's definitely like a, a black licorice. You love it or hate it kind yeah. of thing. Cut it open so you can see the inside, but it's just really this nice, dense, moist cake. Now, I love this. You've probably heard me say before, I don't like sickly sweet desserts. So this is like just sweet enough because it's cake and it tastes like a pound cake but you can certainly taste the olive oil um, and then the little lemon zest in the uh, mascarpone as well. You taste a little bit of sugar from the olives, a little bit of salty as well so it's kind of a almost sweet and salty situation going on but it's definitely not for everyone and um, there's so many great desserts around Disney Springs I wouldn't blame you if you'd rather get some ice cream from Vivoli which is literally right there incredible gelato um, you've got Gideon's Bakehouse here Amaret, Scoopy's Candy Company Sprinkles there's so many little dessert shops I did a, I did a dessert throwdown we can link for you so you can see some of those options if you want to try a little something unique this is definitely something to try something I enjoy but I do think like most table service restaurants the best option is grabbing something elsewhere as you stroll about wrapped up dinner at one Wine Bar George and it was fabulous. There are so many things I love there. Standouts for me were the Saganaki on fire, the mac and cheese bites, and those short ribs are mwah. Not to mention the incredible glass of wine and A plus service. I love Wine Bar George. I think it is truly one of the best restaurants in Disney Springs and not all of Walt Disney World. It's a place that I eat regularly, not working, um, and it's always great for me. Now, is it going to be your best choice if you've got little kids? Probably not. But if you are looking for a date night spot, like I said, older guests, girls night out bachelorette party it's a really great spot you're gonna get some high quality drinks and food um, and not at an obscene cost so I love wine bar George I will keep coming back again and again what restaurant do you want to see reviewed next let us know down in the comments and until then friends follow us on social media at all years net now go watch my review of the hidden speakeasy just around the corner bye thanks for watching